Good morning. Good morning. All right. We're just getting set up here at the back. How's everybody doing? Good. Again, looking a little thin today, like my hair out here, but um, so thankful to be together today. Evan, where are you? Happy birthday, my friend. This is going to be your best year yet, bro. Hey? All right. Well, this is so funny because we've been doing this message on the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, a few of the times that we haven't had any power from media. So uh, just interesting, man. I think the Lord wants to get our attention during this series. But uh, it is all good. While we're getting set up, I just want to uh, tell you a story about uh, this week. I uh, bought something from Marketplace. And uh, the gentleman lived uh, in Caledonia in the new subdivision. And he was a wonderful... Pakistani fella. And um, we got to chatting and I said, man, what's your name? And he said, my name is Eleazar. And I said, hold on a minute, Eleazar. Are you a Christian? And he said, I sure am. And that was awesome. And we got to chatting and uh, he asked me where I was uh, attending and pastoring. And I said, Kingsway. And he said, is that a Pentecostal church? And I said, mm, it might be this week, bro. We'll have to see. It might be this week. But, uh, you know, all jokes aside, I heard a term called, um, you know, we, we consider ourselves a non-denominational, but I heard a term called interdenominational. And it's a body of believers made up of many different um, uh, believers from different backgrounds, but united for the same mission. And I was encouraged by that today. And we are on a mission um, here to help people find Christ in community. And uh, that's really the whole reason why we're doing this series on the Holy Spirit. We want to really look at the work and power of the Holy Spirit and all that there is uh, for us in, in that and in him. And uh, so just before we begin today, I would like just to stop for a moment and consider that he is here right now with us. He's in this building today, and we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. And uh, such a cool thought that he is here today, and we uh, ask that he is ministering to our hearts, and uh, he will speak to us through his word today. So uh, we're going to kick things off today. Um, I have the, the, the privilege of, of talking about the power of the Holy Spirit today, um, such a big topic, and I'm excited to uh, just touch on it briefly, really, today. And um, first, to kick us off, we're going to be looking at Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 6. So if you have your Bibles, I would love for you to uh, join me there, and uh, we'll have it up on the screen for you guys as well. Um, I'm going to have a quick word of prayer, and we'll begin. Father, thank you today for each person here. God, that you are drawing and calling and working in each heart. We ask that as we get into your word that you speak clearly to us, Father. And I ask for um, the Holy Spirit to fill me as I uh, present your word. Would it be clear and precise and uh, would it be fruitful in Jesus' name? Amen. Okay, chapter 1, verse 6 says this. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But here we go. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And I had to read the rest of it here. It says, after this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you staring, uh, standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Amen and amen to that. So uh, this morning, I'd really like to touch on two things um, from this verse, and that's the receiving, and that is the power. It says that you will receive power, and I would just like to touch on um, the receiving first of all. 
Um, as I was preparing uh, this message, I was thinking of my kids, and uh, I thought, hey, um, if there was one prayer I would have for each of my kids is that they would personally receive the Holy Spirit that they would become uh, born-again believers themselves and they would know God um, for themselves. And uh, furthermore than that, that is my prayer for each person in this building, um, each person in our community, all of our youth. That is our, our heart cry here as we continue to um, follow the Lord. And um, I heard a testimony this week of a gal. She was walking uh, the streets of New York City and a guy was, was uh, doing some interviews and he said, boy, you really walk with confidence. Can you tell me why you're so confident? And she said, well, it's Jesus. And he said, Jesus, wow, that's great. Were you always a believer? And she said, no, I grew up in a Christian home, and I knew all the things, but it wasn't until I experienced the Holy Spirit for myself that it really took hold of me. And man, for me, that is something worth talking about and seeking after for all of us. And so... Um, as we touch on receiving, we're going to find ourselves in Matthew uh, chapter 3. And uh, this is the, um, we, where we begin Jesus' ministry with John the Baptist. And uh, please follow along. It says, in those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. John the Baptist, he was preparing people's hearts um, for the coming of the Lord Jesus in that message of repent. Um, that, that word repent, it means to deeply think about um, your life. It means to change your mind. It means to change your direction. He was telling these folks, hey, you really need to stop and consider where your life's at, what you believe, and the direction that you're heading. He was saying you need to repent of your sins and, and turn to God. You, meet, you need to make a life change, a life turn. And he was preparing the way for the work of the Lord Jesus. And um, as he was saying, you need to change your mind about, about God, um, the way you've been living. And, and for us, that is also the same um, call for us today as we prepare our hearts to receive um, this power of the Holy Spirit that we find ourselves... Um, far from God, maybe not where we're supposed to be, possibly even drifting away from him. We need to stop. We need to repent. We need to consider where we're at and, and, turn, and, and turn to God. Um, John went on to say here I, in verse 11, he said, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. And check this out. It says, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. Verse 11 there, I suppose this is the first mention of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's really interesting to me that it says, baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You know, fire, I thought that's what we were trying to get away from with all this, right? Like, why is that something we want to invite on here? And when we think about fire in regards to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's something that happens to us and it's all consuming. It's all consuming. If you think about a building that is ablaze, there is nothing that that fire doesn't touch. There is nothing that that fire doesn't consume. And when we experience um, the Holy Spirit in this way, it immerses all of us. It influences our, our soul, our mind, our thoughts, our spirit. It is an all-consuming thing that happens to us. And this is what Jesus um, intends to do for all those that repent and believe. These are the moments in which we are born again. Born again meaning uh, born from above, born afresh, born anew. There is a heavenly life that is birthed inside of us when the Holy Spirit comes. 
man, it's an exciting thing. It is a life-changing event. And um, we see that in John 3, that there was a man named Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, and he was really interested in Jesus. You know, he wasn't really like the other Pharisees who didn't want anything to do with the Lord. He really... Um, thought there was something special. He was drawn to Jesus. And he says that um, in verse 2, um, after dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes into our life, you guys, um, it changes us. And when we receive it, we learn here that unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. How many people here, when they were born again, you all of a sudden said, I can see things the way they really are now? I can't count um, how many times I've heard people say, man, it's like the blindfold came off. I can really see things for how they are. I've heard that so many times. And, and what we see is we see the ultimate reality of what's really going on. God says that um, he is on the throne. He is, um, we understand that he is the creator and Lord of all. We see that there is a, a godly kingdom. We see that there is a kingdom of darkness. We see our sinfulness and our need for a savior. We see um, the eternal value of, of people. We start to see things how God sees things because he's living in us, showing us the truth about this world. And um, we also get a revelation of God's word through the Holy Spirit. I was listening to, to John MacArthur this week. I thought I better not get carried away. I better listen to John MacArthur a little bit in terms of this. And <laughs> he talked about the um, illumination of God's word by the Holy Spirit. You know, when the Holy Spirit, when we receive the Holy Spirit, um, we read this book and it comes to life to us. How many people here have read something in this book? It's come out of the page at you. You said, man, that is for me right now with what I'm going through. It's an incredible thing. And uh, we thank God for that. Um, I uh, would like to present to you a, a quote from C.S. Lewis. Um, in regards to all this, uh, he says, um, if you're thinking of becoming a Christian, I warn you, you're embarking on something which will take the whole of you. It will take the whole of you. And um, when we talk about this baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, it is going to take all of you. And uh, we see that um, when we get into God's word, it continues to take up more and more of our, of, of our being, and um, it, it truly sets us free. And um, Jesus, when he has revealed his word to us by the Holy Spirit, we see that it is truth, okay? Um, the, the word revelation, it means the unveiling of things. And the more we read God's word, the more of the truth of life is unveiled to us. How many times does Jesus say, truly, truly, I say to you? We see that all through the Bible. He says, truly, truly, I say to you. He says it 25 times. He says it 25 times in the New Testament. And if you want some extra homework, I have gold stars over here. Go home and Google all those times Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you. You will be blown away and encouraged. Back to our story, Nicodemus in verse 4, he said, What do you mean? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind, but you can't hear where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. You know, this born-again concept is pretty important, isn't it? We can't see the kingdom of God. We can't enter the kingdom of God unless we are born again. 
you know, when I'm reminded of all this, um, this, this wind it blows wherever it wants, just like the Spirit, I'm reminded that we cannot put God in a box. We can't put God in a formula and say, do this, that, and the other, and this is what you'll experience. God moves and does what he pleases. And in regard to this, I've heard so many testimonies, so many of your testimonies um, of what God's done in your life. And um, they've, they've, they've all had happened at different times. You know, I was baptized, then bam, right away, uh, I just was different. Man, I was baptized, and 10 years later, something happened to me, and I was changed forever. The wind blows where it will blow. And you know something? I believe because we are all individuals, and we all have our own story. And God, in his perfect knowledge, he knows exactly when and where and how to meet us. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, I'd like to get back to Matthew 3 for a moment as we move our way from receiving and into the power now of the Holy Spirit. You know, we've postured ourselves to, we've repented, we've turned, we've, we've, we've um, drawn close to the Lord, we've postured ourselves um, to, to receive um, the power of the Holy Spirit and to be born again. And we see something um, here as we continue um, with the Lord Jesus. Um, in Matthew 3.13, um, the baptism of Jesus. And so Jesus, he went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. He said, I am the one that needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him, fulfilling one of the 324 Old Testament prophecies that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. Uh, verse 16, it says, After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly beloved Son who brings me great joy. Beautiful picture um, there we have of our Lord being baptized and the Holy Spirit coming and resting on him like a dove. You know something, um, what is gone on now um, is, is going to um, lead Jesus now into one of the hardest times <laughs> of um, his life here on earth. As we see in chapter 4, he um, is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And I've seen so many times, it's almost been like clockwork, when we have a new birth in our life, when you have a baptism, I've seen the week of or the week after be one of the hardest weeks in somebody's life. And that is not a coincidence. There is a spiritual battle going on. And God knows that we need the power of the Holy Spirit to live victoriously for the rest of our life here once we are born again. He really does. And so we see Jesus, he's led into the wilderness and he's tempted by the devil he, um, for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. They were, they were fighting out there in the desert for 40 days. There was warfare out there in the desert for 40 days. And what do we see? Um, I'm not going to read it all, but what do we see um, Jesus' response to the devil every time there was a temptation? We see that he says, it is written, it is written, it is written, Right? And, hey, you may be saying, well, man, that's Jesus. I ain't no Jesus, right? But, in fact, if you say that you're a Christian, you are because Christian means little Christ. Did you know that? And, as always, Jesus is our perfect example on how we're to live and live this thing out. And um, it says that he is the author and perfecter of our faith, as a matter of fact. And... Um, Right now, the point I want to make is it is so vital to be in this book every day. It is so vital. This book is literally God-breathed. You know, we've said this before that this is not a book. This uh, is made up of paper and ink, but it is not a book. It is the living, active Word of God. And as we um, move through this life, as we read God's breath, His breath gets into us and gives us life. And we need breath every day as we're on this journey. It is a must. It is a must. And um, 
It illuminates us to keep on going. It guides us, encourages us, strengthens us, and builds us up. And it also keeps us meek and humble. We're going to talk about the word more in a little bit. But I love by the third time of the temptation, Jesus just said, get out of here. Get out of here, devil. Just get out of here. You know what? And the same for us. We become more mature and um, we become more confident in God's word. And we're able to live this thing out um, victoriously. I thank God for his word. Um, It's so vital to be digging into it every day. We find God there. Um, We obey his word. And and wow, that's when awesome things happen in our life. Um, I love that it said the devil went away in verse 11. And angels came and took care of Jesus and his ministry began. You know, when we're in the wilderness time, we're, we're still out there. We're still going through challenges. But he ministers to us through the Holy Spirit, while we stay close to him and close um, in his word. And you know something I've, I've noticed in my short time here on this earth, that it doesn't seem like our troubles are going to end here. Every time I, I think I'm in the clear for a bit, something else fires up. Anybody else feel like that? You know, you say, hey, how about a break? And then there's no break, you know? What's with that? We need the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us on, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to say, hey, don't look back. Don't look back. As we continue this further, um, there is, we need the power to defeat sin in our life. Um, I heard something on the radio today. It was like, everybody is fine to say, I'm a sinner. But as soon as you say, you're a sinner, man, things change pretty quick, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to be called that in the book of first john it says that we all have sin and that is part of our fallen nature as christians and um i'll tell you um firsthand that sin is a killer sin is a killer it is a spiritual life killer and uh, it's a really interesting thing because part of us wants to keep it wants uh, us to coddle these things that are actually hurting us that are actually stopping our spiritual life from growing and thriving and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to address, to, um, to, to see, and to, def- to defeat that sin in our life. Through God's word leading us all the way. Um, a second thing the power of the Holy Spirit does is um, it gives us the power to love others. Man, I can't help but laugh about this, but who sometimes needs the power of the Holy Spirit to love others right man it can be challenging (laughs) sometimes it can be challenging but you know something that that power in us that love of God in us it just can't help but love other people it just can't help but look past people's offenses and seeing them as wonderful creations by our heavenly father and man we just can't help but love others and man as we continue to love others it leads people to Christ it is a beautiful Beautiful thing. And, and, and thirdly, on that topic, it gives us the power to follow God's will for our life. I can promise you that the Lord is a better Lord of my life than I am of my life. God has such a better plan for my life um, and your life than we think we have for our own. And, and um, sometimes it's hard to see, but he gives us the power to make the right choices, to make the life choices based on our faith in him and our belief in him. And through that power, we're able to follow um, God's plan for our life. We need that power of the Holy Spirit, you guys. I love last week, Mark and Brian, they did such a great job um, on the intro for, for this series. And we talked about in John 14, 26, When the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. We need this connection with the Lord to to teach us his word and to remind us of it as we live this life out. We're designed um, to, to do that and ordained as his children to live like that in this kingdom. And uh, without this connection, we're just like a cell phone uh, with no service. Who's got a cell phone up in here? I'm sure we all do. There was a gentleman here who had a flip phone last night. Anybody got a flip phone? God bless you, Bill. You're on the right track, brother. Yeah, yeah, we all need to look to Bill, you guys. And um, 
Have you ever been up north and you've, you've had this, you've had no service, you've got that SOS up there, right? Or you got the satellite and you ever just feel that, that, that thing in your gut, you're like, oh, I'm not going to make it. I don't have <laughs> any service. This is not good. How am I going to check the weather? Like, it's just not going to happen. We are disconnected from the Lord when we, when, we're not, um, when we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. We're disconnected from him. We're helpless. We're on our own. We're trying to live this life and go through this wilderness time. Man, we need to be connected to him. We need to have the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we receive him, when we associate ourselves with him, we become connected to the God of all creation. The same way when you get your signal back, you are connected to the Lord God um, Almighty. And, uh, man, I couldn't help um, but thinking of, of Romans. I'm not, it's not going to be up there. I'm just going to read Romans 8.26. I was thinking of that as um, I was reading this. It says that um, yet the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't even know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads with us believers in harmony with God's own will. You know, when we're connected with God, the Holy Spirit is always working, keeping us connected with God, teaching us his word. It says there, too, that I will remind you of everything that I told you. Who here needs to be reminded of things sometimes? I do for sure. I need to be reminded to make a phone call or um, to uh, take some meat out of the freezer or um, my girls to put the seat down. No, I don't need, I don't need reminded. <laughs> what I really need to be reminded of is when I'm having a bad day to never tire of doing what's good. Galatians 6, 9. I need to be reminded to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. I need to be reminded to love the Lord God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, and love my neighbor as myself. I need to be reminded that life here is short and that eternity is forever. And that, 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 how that needs to change my perspective. And I thank God for the gift of his Holy Spirit to remind us of these things. And even more vital to be in his word, he will remind you of more and more things as we move forward. Um, as we uh, just kind of wind down and, and, and hit the last few points of the power of the Holy Spirit, it would not be a sermon of the power of the Holy Spirit if we didn't look at Acts 2. Like, it just wouldn't. And so um, if you're there, we're going to look at a couple things. Um, verse 2, it goes like this. It said, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them um, speaking our own native languages. In verse 12, it says, they stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd just ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk. That's all. And I'd like to cue Peter here. Uh, before we hit verse 14, as Peter preaches to the crowd, let's remember the last time um, we really saw Peter before the Lord um, was crucified. Do you remember um, what his response was when people asked him, do you know Jesus? He denied. He said, no, I don't. He denied the Lord three times, in fact. He was a disciple of Christ. He was with him for, 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 for two, three years. And when it came down to it, he said, no, I don't know him. No, I don't know him. 
Shortly after, he is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit here. There's, there's something amazing happening, and someone says, ah, they're just drunk, that's all. They're just crazy Christians, right? Just trying to. And then we cue Peter here. Peter, he steps forward with the 11 other apostles and shouts to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. I don't know why that's in there, but it's making it clear for them. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. And I'm going to read through these couple. It says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will, see, will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen and amen. Peter, immediately after encountering the Holy Spirit, is bold. He is bold. When we're powered by the Holy Spirit, we are not afraid to speak the name of Jesus. We are not afraid to tell people, even if they're making fun of us, that we are a Christian. And that I believe God's word and I'm living for Christ. It empowers us to be um, bold in the way we speak, in the way we live. We're not afraid to be different. I think of even uh, Stephen, as we see in Romans, he was bold right to the end. They said, hey, you better stop talking like that or we're going to throw these rocks at you. He said, well, you better get to throwing because Jesus is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And as we get closer to God and as we receive his spirit, man, we are just, we are unashamed. We are not afraid to live boldly. And the Holy Spirit is, is as we see, working through Peter, giving him the words to say, making, um, reminding him of the scriptures and, and bringing them to life as he's preaching through these uh, folks there. In verse 37, we see something really interesting, and I believe um, this is also for us today. It says, Peter's words, it pierced their hearts. That is a work of the Holy Spirit. When God's word pierces your heart. And I believe it happens as we hear it and as we read it. And so it pierced their hearts. And they said to him and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? I can tell you that when your heart is pierced by God's word and you have that feeling, it demands a response. It demands a response, and these people are responding, what shall we do? And Peter very um, clearly says, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, to those far away in Balmoral, and all who have been called, it doesn't say Balmoral, by the way, but I just put that in. Forgive me, Lord. <clears throat> all, say all, all, who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Man, who thinks we're still living in a crooked generation? Yeah. Amen to that. Um, we know that we cannot save ourselves, but we can sure turn away from it. We can sure turn away from all the garbage out there and all the jibber-jabber, and we can turn to God and focus on his truth and the way we should live and, um, and ask for the power of his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Um, it demands a response, you guys, when God's word pierces our hearts. <clears throat> It says something, uh, just to finish in verse 41, it says, those who believed, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 and all, and, and all uh, in all. Have you ever heard the term born-again believer? That's something that uh, you feel like, oh man, they're, they're a real one. 
They're a born-again believer. You know, um, that's a big part of who we are, isn't it? We are a, a believer that has been born again, right? That is a correct term for us, right? And um, the gift of faith plays a role in all this. So uh, there's one question that I want to ask you. What do you believe? Do you believe this book? Do you believe what it says? Do you believe that it is the complete, inerrant <laughs> word of God? Do you believe that? Even human philosophers agree that a man is what he believes. What we believe, it dictates the choices we make. It dictates our character, and it dictates who we are. What we believe is very important. You know, when I first met my wife, Valerie, um, we were helping to lead a, a youth group in Caledonia, and I guess I'm a pretty thick guy, um, and I did not know that she was interested in me. And um, one day she made me some um, coconut squares. And I said uh, to my mom, I said, hey, mom, look, Valerie made us some squares. And she said, no, sweetie. Valerie made you some squares. <laughs> and I said, oh. So <laughs> I started to realize the, the, the blindfold was coming off. Thank you, Father, for that. And I started to believe it. And so because I believed, I started doing different things. I started pursuing her a little bit, and I continued to realize that she did have affection for me. Now we've been married eight years. I don't know what happened, but it, that's supposed to be a joke. But anyways, <laughs> it's all good. Love it, love it. When we believe, when we sit back and we really think about this, do I believe this message? Do I believe that I need the power of the Holy Spirit to live this life out? Do I want to do that? Do I want to be more like Jesus? Do I want to see him do awesome things in my life? Am I ready um, to, to, to remove some things if I need to? That quote from the beginning um, is it, funny. C.S. Lewis, he gives, I warn you, it's going to take all of you. It's going to take all of you. I can promise you one thing, you guys. Anything in my life that I've had to give up for the Lord, it's been worth it time and time and time again. There is nothing that I hold on to that I think will, will do better than what God has for me. It's ever worked out well for me. It's so worth just giving it all to him. As we close uh, Ephesians 1.13, it says this, And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Do we believe it? Do we believe it? Do we want to be more like Jesus? Do we want to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit? St. Augustine said, For it is one thing to see the land of peace from a wooden ridge, and another to tread on the road that leads to it. You know, one thing I believe in is, is praying for people and laying hands on people. I grew up in a charismatic church uh, all over the place. Don't get nervous and run out. We lock the doors anyways, but um, I really believe that when we come to the Lord in faith and, uh, and, and um, with an honest heart and a repentant heart, and we ask for things, we ask for things, man, God is so faithful and true um, to, to do it. I just talked to a fella in Caledonia. He was, um, a, um, he was struggling with some things, and he had just started coming to church and he was pierced by God's word. And somebody ran out to him after the service and said, hey, man, can I pray for you? And he said, yeah. And this dude laid hands on him, prayed for him. And he was immediately changed, went in his truck and cried for an hour. He went home and told his wife, he said, something, the best thing in my life has just happened to me. I think I've been born again. It's amazing. And she looked over and said, I want it too. I want it too. You know, and... Um, the bottom line is this, you guys. Jesus saves. 
He transforms lives. The work of the Holy Spirit transforms lives, and he wants to keep doing that in each of our lives, in our families, in this church, and in this community. And that is why in this place we welcome the Holy Spirit. Before we rush off today, if you'd like prayer, there's many of us here would love to lay a hand on you, pray for you, and uh, we'd love to chat further, of course, as well. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you that you pursue us, God that you have uh, brought us out of the darkness into your glorious light, that you take us from that miry clay from the pit and you set our feet on a rock, Father. Thank you um, for the truth of your word. Thank you for the life and power we have uh, by the indwelling of your spirit in us, Father. Father, I would ask that um, it goes out and dwells in, in all of us, Father, and that each one here would look to you for that, Father, and say, I need that, I want that, Lord Jesus, help me. Would you help us turn where we need to turn from and, and, and turn to you where we need to turn to you, Father? We thank you um, for your love, for your leadership, for your guidance, and we welcome you into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it didn't get that Pentecostal just yet, but there's still time, you guys. There's still time. Um, if you'd like on the board here, we have some further questions. Uh, it's just some discussion questions. If you have questions of the Holy Spirit that we don't touch on in this series, would you ask us? You can even write it down and throw it in the offering box. Um, but it's such a good thing to explore. We also have some further readings uh, if you'd like some further study on this subject as well. God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you after. And of course, grab your kids. Thank you. Your love is like a river Rushing up on me Rushing up on me So strong Like a mountain Standing in the air Standing in the air